what? Yeah. Just yeah. like a windy day and that's it? Uh, there's even no wind. It's just normal. Wow. Is there a noise? Is it? Does it <sighs> I make the noise, but that's it. <laughs> oh no my wind. god! No but does anybody believe you if no semen comes <laughs> out? Does anybody believe? You? <laughs> yeah, because you can fake it all the time. You you, 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 First of all, I don't think males are motivated to fake. You know what I mean? Oh, I've, so, I've been there. Really? Okay, Anything well. to get me out of the damn bedroom, dude. I would do it. <laughs> There's a lot packed into that statement. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. yeah. <laughs> gang, gang. Buzz, buzz. Back off my broccolini. Get your life together. It is. Don't touch me, bro. I'm not touching you, dude. Show on earth. So, well... Here we are. Why don't we introduce who's in our culture corner? Well, look, man, we got we had to get as cultural as we could. That's what we had to do. We had to call in some big hitters. Mm-hmm. And me. <laughs> when you say culture, I sort of think like a bacterial culture. Oh. Yeah, see, That's I'm what like, it is today. Yeah, good. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a resistant strain. I yeah. think cancel culture. That's the first ooh, thing that comes ooh, to my mind. Nice. I'm a big, nice. big fan. Big fan. I want everyone fired. I support. I want that. everyone fired, but me. Yeah. <laughs> God, God, I'm a big fan of cancel culture. <laughs> it's so stupid and so primitive and so crazy. It's really it's the French Revolution behavior. It's guillotine. Can, can it go away though? You think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it even it out. Culturally, I, I, pendulums always swing back. Well, the problem is that when you when you get into these um, scapegoating, you know, group scapegoating mob behavior, eventually the mob themselves is up on the guillotine. So it starts eating itself. Just Good. no one's pure enough. I don't know if you saw where Alyssa Milano was getting attacked by Hilarious. Rose McGowan. I'm like, I well, here it, it comes. That's here, right. here it comes. The the most woke are getting. I'm woker. Boom, you're dead. She's like, you stole my Me Too movement. Yeah. It's like, yes, go yeah. at it. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, they went at each other because uh, one of these. One, my buddy hooked up with one of these ladies in a motel hallway. I bet I could guess which one. Um, but that, like actually hooked up in the hallway. Yeah. Or, or it, I think it, yeah, it really escalated out of the hallway and then moved to other rooms. Your friend needs to be careful. You know well, what I mean? This wasn't recently, though. I'm just saying. It seems like stuff is like there's no no statute on these things. <laughs> like they, oh, yeah, yeah. No, but I think she started it. I'm saying. Doesn't matter, really. He was saying. looking for the restroom. Yeah. He was looking for the restroom. She's like, hey, how about I blow you? I, whoa, whoa, now you're now you're taking it down. I don't even know, man. I'm just saying things escalated. Mike said that happened. Yeah. Yeah, the blowjob bandit. There's a blowjob bandit? She was a blowjob bandit all over Comic-Con one year. It was nuts. Wow. <laughs> and were people scared? No, no, no. I was at first until I got blown. He was the object of said... Um, oh, you were a victim. Victim. I beg your pardon, victim. I mean, I, you. if you want to classify it as being a victim, I guess. But yeah, she. she I was... <laughs> he was attacked. Yeah. Was he really? How so? Dude, she... Okay. I was with mm-hmm. some people that I actually knew and like I was with this young lady who like we weren't boyfriend girlfriend but we were like sounds like a rape setting the groundwork okay this this other girl and she got fucking hammered we we had hooked up and stuff like like we were there but we were in the early stage and she got like hammered like concerning white girl wasted and then she's like uh, she was grooming her sub- subject she where are you grooming, staying say grooming yeah where are you staying and i go i'm staying at the fucking hilton or i don't remember what hotel she's like oh um i'm gonna walk you back to your room and i was like i don't really think that's <laughs> thank you though but um yeah, she like a i'm good park person or something park like ranger yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> she, at comic-con yeah at comic-con yeah i'm and gonna it, help you hide your food in boxes before you go to bed yeah. and by the way andrew will back me up on this i'm like not exactly like party king. It was probably like 10 p.m. You know, I was like, really? Do I need to be walking home? And is home? she attractive? She's m- by no means unattractive, but she's not my type. She's first Mike, off, Mike she's, has a thing. She's a, Mike has a blonde zone. white girl, which is great and all, but that's not, I like, you and I have talked about this. Yes. I like, we have the same type. Ethnic, big ass, yeah. tit, like very petite titties, but like nice, big, juicy legs. Yep, and we're the this same. girl was a um, more of like a, like a, she was an attractive, but like a like a sorority girl attractive, okay. like you know, like Abercrombie type thing, right? You know? Okay. And uh, poor, so, poor Mike, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's really this sad. Is, isn't God, it? I hope you. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. I hope you're all right with all. This. And I go, uh, no, you know what? I'm I'm good. I'm really on the edge of my seat, dude, because you broke one of the rails off. <laughs> <I did. this laughs> one. I'm like, I'm good. Your knoll chair. chair. I don't need yeah, a disgust in detail. <laughs> I don't need like a walk home. I'm 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 okay. And she said, uh, No, I'm gonna walk you home. I'm gonna suck your cock. And I go, Wow. Good for her. That's so, but that's so, when you're in that, it, it sounds great. But in the moment, though, that's so dramatic. You're like, is this girl setting me up for something? What's, is right, this a prank right. show? Is there like, something very, like, 
a seemingly normal, non-crazy girl goes, no, I'm going to follow you home and suck your cock. You're like, wait, wait, wait. What bizarre world am I in? Spunked, maybe. Will be the show. <laughs> <laughs> With Ashton Gutcher? Yeah. 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 Um, so, like, wow. she follows me home. It could home. be a thing now. Yeah, really, yeah, really good. You're on spunk, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're right, not dude. busting a nut tonight, Randy. <laughs> yeah, got you, man. Yeah, you're on spunk. <laughs> but he doesn't jump out until you're going to your pants are down. Be still good. Enjoy your blue balls now. <laughs> yeah. 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 People say we're heading towards idiocracy. It'd be a perfect show for yeah. that. For that. But that's movie. not idiocracy. That's just. I mean, I'd watch that. Like yeah. celebrity what happened? guys. You got the blowjob though. So yeah, just, yeah bro. <laughs> she follows me home. Here, she follows Christ, me home. Dude. I like change the subject. All this, I'm not even getting. <laughs> yeah, this I, is spunk. <laughs> she changes the subject, and and I, we, she follows me home, and I'm like, okay. So I finally get to my hotel room. I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, I'm, all right, good night. She said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow you in, and I'm gonna suck your cock, and I don't want anything. I just, she's like, I really want to blow you, and I go, this is so strange. You said um, that out loud. Yes, I go, this is very peculiar. You know that, right? And she's like, she's like, just now, she's like punking me. She's mm -hmm. like, what are you a bitch? Like she's I want to, yeah. So yeah. I go, okay. So I open the door. And I walk in like maybe 10 feet and she just starts, I have like a belt on and everything. And she just starts fucking yanking oh, on my aggressive. pants. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. So I undo my belt Hungry and for pull, she completes the, the thing and I complete the, uh, the, That's the blow job. Yeah. His, 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 his version of the employer. I, yeah. uh, I, yeah. I arrived <laughs> yeah. and, uh, his part of the deal. And she like sits there and on her knees, she goes, <sighs> just hug me. And I go, oh, oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. oh, you mean she wasn't all mentally sane? Uh -oh. <laughs> she didn't have her shit together, Mike? And then things, uh, then I got the chills and everything. So I do, but like an awkward hug, like you would hug your aunt, you know, like I was like, like, a, like an ironing isn't? board. Yeah. Like, and, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she got up and, uh, after like 45 seconds of hugging, she got up and she left and I never saw or talked to that girl again. Wow. Now, now a Mike was sexually abused when he was like 12. I would say that was another sexual abuse act. She found a right good victim who didn't see it as an abuse because he'd been abused before and didn't understand that it was an abuse back when he was 12. And she raped him. Wow. You, Sick. You classify that as rape. That was a that was an Brandon, unwanted. Did you hear the story? The the main, yeah, I'm, not, I'm seeing what the uh, doctor, not it's you, a, classifies as rape. I know un, what you do. Unwanted sexual contact with, per, you know, with... I, mean, I if I'm flip the script, oh, a male dude. does that. But flip the script, and, and it's way worse typically, though. Because let me be clear: at any point, at any point there, even though I was kind of resisting, I could have physically said stop it and yeah. put my hand out and been like, leave now, or there's gonna be trouble. A woman oftentimes doesn't have that luxury, and you know it does make it. Or it's it too makes scary it worse. for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree. And not I'm saying that you should have done something different. I'm just saying. That's what that was. Yeah. And that's interesting. I'm glad it didn't hurt him or traumatize him or anything. It's, you know. I thought the story was going to go elsewhere and then she went like door to door sucking guys <laughs> off. Well, because you called her the suck man. Okay. So I didn't know her name. It only takes one time to be a suck man. <laughs> no, I tells start. It. You're not a bandit. Not you in, suck dick. Not in Brandon's <laughs> view. I start yeah, telling the yeah, story yeah. like, you know, back, a back <laughs> yeah, to Loveline, right. back to Kevin and Bean. I start telling the story and everything. And I didn't know this woman's name. And people started at me like, well, who was she? I was like, well, I know she was so-and-so's publicist because she kept telling That's why she was at Comic-Con. Mm. Uh, and then people go, I'm, and they're like, oh, I, as the story grew, many men were like, oh, I, I know that girl. Yes. Uh, she's, she's a predator. Really. She's, uh, that she's a good time. She'd be yeah. a predator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that Wiener Banshee. Yeah, for real. Wiener Banshee. <laughs> sick. That's my new band. Well, yeah. Banshee. Yeah, you want to oh, be in Wiener Banshee, band. dude? And see, what's messed up is if you're a man, if somebody tries to suck your wiener, it's right there. It's, it's hanging out of your body. Whereas yeah. if you try to do that, you can't really, to a lady, you got to kind of go look for their wiener a little. You can't, it's just there's not no, the there's same. No, they're not the same. Yes. There's right. No, yeah. You have that really, your penis is just kind of hanging around waiting to be a victim. It's like a drunk guy at a park, you know, at a gay park. Someone's going to take advantage of them. Yeah. It's always there. Yeah, it's always just like essentially ready like for the tail. act. Yeah, it's yeah. just imagine it's if people's women's vaginas was hanging out about seven inches from their body. People be Or if it was like on day. their chin. Your problem. You know, like it'd be so easy just to like fucking walk up and be like, fuck yeah. You like that? Yeah. Like, Look, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, oh my God. So never, nobody ever takes that little, you know, that in a, you got to look at it to scale or whatever it's called. Would you, would you guys get a lot of callers on Loveline who who didn't realize it was something like that? Yes. Yeah. Who didn't realize they've been raped and stuff. I, 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 didn't, was, realize, was I didn't realize yeah. that, that would be rape. I, I, well, not only that, his, his original sexual abuse, I had to like, kind of 
bring him into get it into focus for him. I never talked about it ever. Yeah. I never opened up about it, and then I finally did on Loveline. I was like thirty, and, and, I, and I was goes, like, "You hear these stories every night." This is one of those stories, right? Wow. Just you're a male, and you don't, you know. And that, you were how old? It, it was a. I, was like I think you to a babysitter, right? Or no, she was my my cousin's older. My cousin was like a senior in high school, and this That's was right. her friend. She was like already graduated high school. She was like 19, 20. Wow. and I was and beautiful 13. lady. <laughs> no, he, he has a name for her: the mustachioed succubus. Because she had, yeah, it was like similar to Brendan's facial. Oh, oh. I think I bet Handsome on her on the Preakness lady. once, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome young lady. That yeah. well, though I do feel like a certain different level of sensitivity to a lot of these girls who say, like I didn't say no, but I didn't want to do it, and I felt like uh, the power difference right. made me. It was intimidating, and so a lot of guys they don't necessarily comprehend that I when they say that I go, oh my god, you're I get it. You I'm were so 13, sorry. Though? Yeah, mm. I mean. But I was very horny, yeah, and I, I definitely... 13 year olds would think that's cool, but when they actually experience it, it's not so cool sense. with a 20-year-old. Yeah. yeah. I remember I was a bus boy, and... Uh -oh. uh, Here we go. Yeah. So you must have been 16, at least? Mm, no, man. I started early bus boy, and I was bus boy probably 14. Well, I was probably one of the 30 or 15 best bus boys in Tucson. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Tucson? Yeah. yeah. This is well, I Nobu you're still or... in Louisiana, then. I lived in Tucson for one year oh. during high school, and that's when I was really... Got so, you've, you've like really educated me about the South. Oh I, yeah, I rely on you for some of that. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's definitely a lot of. Uh, it's still the same, you know. Evidently, yeah, nothing's changed since the last time we talked. Oh, really, man. you know. No updates for Doctor Drew on the South. Not really. Well, they got the that and, and I'm talking about, you know, I've spent a lot of time in Atlanta, and Nashville, and Asheville, and stuff, Greenville, places like that. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah, we're, we're talking, talking about molasses country, Theo's yeah. South. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking where it gets real risque. You yeah. know, we're talking the stray animal belt. Yeah, um, where you throw. Gerbils out of the back of a car. Oh, dude. <laughs> so, They're hamsters. Hamsters, whatever. We it's sold them. <laughs> okay. But you know what? The same thing happens in the city. Like everyone, they're like, I've been to Los Angeles. You know, I went to Hollywood and Highland and, yeah. and I went to Rodale Drive. And you're like, go to Commerce. Yeah, I got yeah. molested you know what I'm by saying? some That's, Persian guy at a Starbucks. It's like, yeah. different. Okay. It's You've different been, though. Yeah. You go to like. You've been. Okay, yeah. that counts. Everyone's like, I've been to New York City. I went to the Statue of Liberty. I was like, go to the mm -hmm. South Bronx. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's also New York. It's very yeah. different, you know? Go buy some smack over there yeah. on freaking B and 2nd and B, you know? It is kind of, that's kind of an interesting topic no one ever discusses, by the way. How these, th these environments and cities and regions get sort of a character and we just accept that that's just how it is. Yeah. When in reality, the real lived experience, if you get out there with people, is very, very different. I'm sort of interested in that. And uh, you've enlightened me on the South. Yeah, well, I think that's a big problem we have right now is a lot of people just not understanding what it's like in certain places. That's exactly yeah. right. And there's that's no exactly, way That's to exactly see why it interests me, right? Yeah. We, Some we, man yesterday, I met a white man outside yesterday, and he was telling me that- Have you changed your race since I last saw you? <laughs> you uh -uh. keep talking about white people. Is that, are you white? Oh, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm we, trying to we're say- We're not sure. Yeah, yeah okay, I'm okay. To okay. Just check. Yeah, just check. You know? Yeah, for okay, multiple good. reasons. good. Let me, see, to, let me see your cock. I'm trying to get that- <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Mike's white. He's Jewish, I think, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get that SBA loan, dude. I'm not, I'm not claiming anything right now, bro. BLM, dog, you know? Um, so, uh, and this man said they were trying to come out with a virtual reality so you could see what other people's reality is like. Oh, that's know? interesting. So to get an idea. That's a great idea. Because people are always like, oh, people from the South, they're racist, you know, and it's just not the truth. I am just get so tired of hearing it. And then, but it's just people's perceptions. They just can't understand what this other, what you know, another place if, is if like. They, if they really do an AI thing like that, it'd be great. Like, here's the, you know, Theo's neighbor's perspective, age five. Yeah. Here it yeah. is, age 12. Yeah. Here it is in high school. Yeah. And to give those experiences to us, it'd be fantastic. But also, people's experiences are based off what they see in the media as mm -hmm. well. well. Now so it is. It's a big, now. It's a big, it's a big nightmare. problem. I and think we're, I think we're slowly coming out of that. I think okay. the COVID taught people uh, that they're just trying to, fuck with us yeah but you're, you're you're looking at you're looking at like social media and like internet media i, I look at cable news i'm talking but even yeah, that too. like take cable news divorce right. yourself from that media, social media is a nightmare look too. at yeah. mainstream real commercial media whether it be reality shows or sitcoms and things like that whenever like like look at jersey shore like vicky gunvalson if you've never been to the northeast now vicky's my friend how is she really you? a little bit i don't even know i just love her name so i just thought about <laughs> it's a great name it's like i get my news all those from, oc housewives man I'm, yeah. uh, i get my friend. news from yeah, be vicky careful. be careful it's like i just want my news from vicky gunvalson i want it straight from her and that's <laughs> look at that face she's awesome hey but here's the deal that's uh -huh. whoa what? is she awesome drew 
Yeah, is, she, is, she, is she fucking is she huh? is she I'm, Teddy Roosevelt? No. I mean is she awesome? No, no. <laughs> or is she Come kind on. of like easy to get along with? Like let's not I you know. like her. Yes, okay, I fine. Mean, she might be a nice no, person. No, She's not like fucking her. awesome. <laughs> man, yeah. that's his friend, though, man. He has gone hard in the paint. Yeah, I'm also a fan line. of this. This is love. We did many, many years of this. Yeah. It's, 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 it's Look, a finally most of our machine. friends are sex offenders, so okay. we can't even say anything. I have to, I have to talk him down off the ledge. Yeah. He has sorry, to sorry, keep sorry. me honest. Because Drew will be like, <laughs> recovering sex offenders. Yeah. I do want to say that. Mike keeps me also. honest. Like, like, I, I have, I'm 10 towards hyperbole. <laughs> Drew will say, like, oh, I'm going to see this film. I don't want to talk shit, but Drew will be like, I'm going to see this band on Friday. It's going to be great. Susan and I are going. I was like, fuck you. He goes, no, they're great. They're amazing. I was like, true, stop. Let's let's pause. Let's rewind. Is that band great? Or are, or did they come on Loveline and they were really nice to you and you want to go support them? Because yeah. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right That's you're Hollywood right. great. Yeah. Yeah. And Hollywood after a while, it's like, oh, yeah, you got to meet this great guy, you know? And then it's a bad guy. Yeah. Or, or you know, a lot of things is true. Is, this is his credit. This is the, honestly, and this is real. He doesn't realize that people treat him special. He doesn't realize he's a celebrity. He doesn't realize mm -hmm. he's like big. Drew is... Very unaware of that, he, and uh, it, weird, it's, it's a compliment. Thank him. God, because he's very he's very humble, very, very nice down man. Down. But yes. but Drew will say shit like, "Dude," um, and this is like at the opening of it. You know, he goes, "You gotta go see the the Book of Mormon on Broadway," and I was like, "Okay, yeah. uh, do you have a thousand bucks to loan me?" And it, and and. Can I get in? Can I, yes, you're just like, oh, no, just go backstage. It's easy. It's very easy. <laughs> you just go backstage, and then you talk to Matt and Trey, and then everyone. And I'm like, Drew, what? Are you? It was Josh. It was Josh. Yeah. And, you know, exactly. Yeah. And I was like, Drew, oh, wow. that's not how it works for me. That's how yeah. it works for you. You know, he doesn't get that. You got to go to this restaurant. It's a bit. You just. Oh, yeah. I was like, Drew, I don't. I don't have eight hundred dispensable bro, it's dollars. Hollywood too, yeah. man. It's Druish, man. He's Druish also, yeah. which also helps. <laughs> Druish princess. Yeah. Yes, that's Drudyism. <laughs> <laughs> But it helps to be Dr. Drew, man. Yeah, fuck it yeah. I have Drew. no awareness of that shit. That's weird to me. And I, and I think it's because because I, I look at people that are very aware of that stuff, and I just think, mm, I don't think you ever had a job. Right. Yeah, like, if you really worked in the world for years like I did, decades, or killing myself, that's that's your self-concept <laughs> is the guy grinding it out in the yeah. hospital. That's, right. that's yeah. it. I'm still that guy. Yeah, and I think also since you provide us like actually a – like service. documented service yep. to people, like a diploma-based service, <laughs> diploma then based. people give that a little bit of different credit than a couple of F tards, you know? I don't know. They, they like to knock that down. Like me and Brendan yeah. or my, and Mike and Nick. Yeah. They, they like to, especially chin these days. Chin, yeah. Chin, yeah. For an Asian chin, yeah, it's really, chin here. really, really come in pretty low. Um, well, well. Dude, you know 66% of men start to lose their hair by 35, bro? Now, is this all men? White, Latino, black, everything? Urban? It, yeah. Hair wow. loss does not discriminate, brother. Oh, like, wow. Not a, we don't have a problem. You got a set of hair. I got a set of hair. But well, I'm growing my hair back out, dude. And is it? Are I'm you taking better care of it this time? I'm, I'm using hymns. Yeah. I'm trying to get that bad boy, you know, long. Get them dreads. Well, look, the thing is, I'm noticing too, B, about hymns is that um, it definitely, it's almost like as if you're a farmer or someone that owns plants yep. and you want to take care of them. If you just put a plant outside, who knows what happens? You got to fertilize it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to fertilize. You got to take care Water. of it. You got to farm it. Yeah, dog. You this know? is real stuff. Prescription solutions backed by science. No more awkward in person doctor visits and this long. ain't snake oil nah man for him to connect you to licensed medical professionals online all right lmps baby licensed medical professionals to and today right now hymns is giving our our clientele mm -hmm. uh a gift brother yeah a big gift man and if you're not happy with the results after 90 days hymns will give you a full refund so listen up cats all right go to forhymns.com slash k-a-t-s that's forhymns.com slash k-a-t-s S. Yep, for a full refund of price paid available for first 90 days supply. Refund requests must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash K-A-T-S. And take care of your crop. You want to tighten up. Hello, fresh. Oh, dang, boy, you freaking flirting? Yeah, <laughs> flirting because I'm trying to make you dinner, Poppy. Dang, yeah, what? dog, with a Hello Fresh. It offers convenient delivery right to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the fam, with your bro. And it's you, a money saver. Yeah, dude, is it ever? And it's delicious, man. Gourmet recipes, all right? It's a money saver. You know, did you know this? And I know you didn't, so I'm going to say it that you Please. can save 40%. Oh, wow. 
off of your regular grocery pricing by using HelloFresh. Unbelievable, man. There's something for everyone, including low calorie if you're thick like me, vegetarian, kid-friendly recipes. We got it all, man. Hit It's flexible. What do you need? We got you. Yep. Give them that deal, bro. I'll, Give them the freaking deal, I'll Theo. hit them with that DZ. What I'm telling you right now is go to HelloFresh.com slash eight zero the number eight the number zero k-a-t-s and use code eight zero k-a-t-s to get a total of eighty dollars off your first month including free shipping on your first box additional restrictions apply visit hellofresh.com for more details look i'm telling you right now go to hellofresh.com slash eight zero k-a-t-s and use code eight zero k-a-t-s the meals they have man, oh, man it comes with the meat it comes with the chives. It comes with the onion, the tomatoes, baby. Whatever Everything's in there. The sauce, the packets, the valuables, the it's edible convenient. valuables. It's convenient. It's delicious. Damn it, it's in a box. HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 80cats, K-A-T-S, and use the code 80cats to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. 80 cats, and it sounds like uh, 101 Dalmatians. Have you seen that? Yes, yeah, this is the remix. We have Robert Pattinson right here uh, <laughs> from an outtake of their film, obviously. Hey, Robert. <laughs> Hey, Brendan. Hey, Theo. Matthew coming at you from Montreal, Canada. Here for some sex advice. Uh oh, here we go. So boys. lately in the last three years, I've hadn't had sex once and I'm finding it a little bit concerning, maybe a little honorable, but honorable? I'm just <laughs> I've hit a rough patch lately. I'm just I'm working all the time. I'm a plumber full time, so it's it doesn't really go well with the whole schedule of just going out and meeting new people. But I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Um, gang, gang, buzz, buzz. Um, well, he's one also part of this me, on a playground. Which one is. part of yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> the guy's yeah. obviously donated most of his blood too. Yeah, there's millions. But he's really <laughs> handsome to not be fucking for three years. Yeah, he's not a bad dude. <laughs> which which yeah. immediately makes me think: does, is he at us just to get laid? Cause it's just this guy's actually really active, and he just figured, oh, this is another way to get laid with, with uh, you know. Well, he had, to sneak, he had to sneak outside of somewhere to make the and video. And go to a playground. He's at a playground, he said? Yeah, he's at, there's a playground behind him. In one of the dopest cities ever. Montreal's the dopest oh place. God. Like, it's I fantastic. would not be on a playground. I'd be at oh. some poutine bar getting <laughs> fucking hot Montreal poontang. You yeah. okay. jerk so, off out of a window in Montreal, yeah. it'll <laughs> land on somebody hot. <laughs> yeah. Someone insanely hot. So, so here's the deal. He's got, he's got to reprioritize, right? First of all, you don't know how old he is. I'm assuming he's an adult, right? Yes, I mean, sometimes, you know, 15-year-olds look like very... He's very, a plumber, though. Yeah, he's, that's full what I'm time. saying. He's a plumber full-time. In Montreal, he's got the a, plumbers are beautiful. This guy's I know. He probably speaks two languages. He's a model, for God's sake. Get it. Reprioritize. Set some time aside. It's that simple but make it i mean he's got in these days when you have apps that's what I said. I mean, there's a million apps dude but just, it sounds like he said he almost felt like uh happy of, or not proud or proud of it he said honorable honorable so maybe there's some like thing going on like some what religious does that mean? thing yeah like he feels like he should be is, like he's an incel or something or you know that he has some issues around maintaining abstinence but bottom line is balance is important balance your life not don't not, not just the workaholism put time aside to socialize He'll be fine. And I'm assuming as a plumber, that's a Monday through Friday gig, Saturday and Sunday. Well, no, with the yeah. apps too? Yeah, but you could see how if somebody really wanted to succeed, they could they could be plumbing 16 hours a well, day. Well, that's what yeah. I used yeah. to tell that to Drew's yeah. son. He has triplets and two of them are boys. And they, of course, like any young 20, you know, in their early 20s, they're concerned about pussy. And I would talk to them about it. I was like, dude, honestly, if your 20s through, like your 20s and early 30s suck, that's probably a good thing. It's the guys I worry about are constantly clubbing well past college age. They're point. not setting up their life. You, I said, really make sure that these years suck because when you're 40, life's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. And you're going to have money and, and a, a sense of self and you're going to be confident and you're just going to be, there'll be pussy falling off of walls and hitting you in the face. I think you could and, do both though, right? I think there's a balance there to Drew's point. I think you could do both. Yeah. You set your life up there's and a, still I mean, They need girls. to visit from Uncle Mike. We need a little... Little chat. <laughs> that, sounded your, your that sounded yeah, gross. Kiddos do. That sounded very gross. Time. They need a little pep talk. They need a little. How, 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 old, thing, how old are they now? Twenty-seven. This COVID thing has been rough on the late twenties. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, really can't do anything. A lot of unless men, you're yeah. a YouTuber throwing parties, they can't go anywhere. Yeah. Jerking yeah. off. A lot of men pretending gay. 
mm. you know, doing everything like that. Mm. You should write children's books for adults, Mike. That would be <laughs> <laughs> nothing creepy about that. Well, we need them though. I feel like I think you're right. Um, yeah, because I notice if I jerk off, man, I feel I still feel pretty bad about it, man. Feel guilty. Oh, shamed. I jerked off yesterday. I'll be really honest with Not you. Not before you I, ejaculate. Just I wash after both ejaculate. my arms too, actually. Just I, you're, di- you're di- I know when you jack off, you're different in here. Yeah, you know, it's just after you jack. Not before. For ladies out there, they may not understand this phenomenon. Men. Feel no shame, no guilt until immediately after the flu. Oh, I'll released. look at the right. porno I was watching. I'm like, you're disgusting. <laughs> after, oh, oh, after, you're, I cannot before relate. Before you ejaculate, no. after, I'll I cannot it, relate. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, con- I'm, I'm already timing. Like, when's the next time I can beat off again? Like, I don't, I do not <laughs> oh, feel. Feels like, disgusted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mike is disgusted. I have a really high and sex confused, drive. Confused and confused. And I feel like for me, beating uh, off is more of like marriage counseling so you know? so let me to that point do, do you need to like you, your wife is like that's his, <laughs> that's the pace she can maintain and that's that yes you've got to take care of yourself yes and I'd, I'd much and, instead of like i like to unload the chamber before i even go on instagram before i even do anything because then there's just less of a chance of me smart going astray smart. And, so, and so what what's the rhythm for the for the catherwood family now I would say two or three nights a week. Okay, so oh, it's pretty wow. good rhythm. It's a pretty Still, good rhythm. I mean, and I'd say that's a lot, right? Two well, or three nights. Well, well, hold on. You've been together finished. for how long? <laughs> Average is one and a half, and two to three, you're doing good. One and two a half. Two to three nights a week, there's the there's the opportunity where we'll put our daughter to bed, and it's like, you know, 8, 8.30. But you're tired. And Exactly. And it's, always, just, a, it's always a crapshoot where it's like, I'll present the idea to my wife, and, and 50% of the time, she goes... Yeah, honey, let's do it. And then another 50% of the time, she goes, I'm super tired, and I get it. I'm is always it ever the other way? Where she's, no. where she's yeah uh, sometimes with no. me it's the other way no there's I'm never happened tired, but you you man. grind harder than most people and i also <laughs> i'm also fucking gross like i mean i will admit it i i i'll be i'll i've done this i beat off in the bathroom i've done that walked into my bedroom and my wife's like can we have sex and i'm like yes we can oh you god know, bless you wow. <laughs> you know you are you're a superhero because my dick it's, hurt. it's the only way i can captain america like on a contra team or something yeah. well, it's the only way i can be <laughs> somewhat insane. successful it's the only way i can be somewhat successful because i premature yeah. ejaculate so much so i'm, I'm lucky my gift is that I can do it over and over again, but I come in like 25 seconds. Whoa, That's God. a gift, though. <laughs> it's a gift. It's a gift. Relax, dude. <laughs> and how much been, is that? You guys have been together like half how long? a handful? Uh, we've been married seven years. We've been together probably like a little under nine. And then we have a kid, different animal. You know how yeah. Dr. Yeah. Well, I So you we know, I've been through the, I've run the, the cycle, right? So we're together since 84. We wow. got married in 91. And we're still three times a week. Oh, True. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God! Wait, you got to get Drew's wife on this show. Yeah. She's the best. Three times a week, mm-hmm. and oh. yeah, well, that's after she got the prosthetic limbs because Drew had already fucking <laughs> smashed her in half with his oh gigantic God. Hebrew hog. Yeah, that's well, that gigantic that's well kosher, documented. Yeah, that kosher He's log that he goes in there. I've seen. I've, I'll go to visit, and or we'll go out to dinner. And Susan just we'll, comes in walking like she's been horseback we'll sometime, riding. We'll you know? sometimes pick up beyond that pace. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. That's a, oh. Still, mm-hmm. is the butt is the butt open about? for business? Is the butt open for business in the Pinsky? Whoa, household? bro. Theo's Theo's a friend of Susan's. He can't stand it. Relax. I don't know her, so finish this. (laughs) (laughs) I think I want too many email chains whether they even know it. And Susan, (laughs) and and I mean this, and I'm not even being gross. Susan, if for a woman her age, is like a ten. Yeah, is like honestly very beautiful, very kind. That's I would expect nothing less. That should be what women aspire to look like at that age. Honestly, three times a week. Can we edit that out, Nick? I don't need this sort of harassment from my wife. (laughs) (laughs) Now, why has it changed? I feel like it's changed over time a lot. A lot of men, you know, don't want to have sex as much, and women want to have sex more. Do you think it's like the media that makes us think that? No, the there's case, a, lot of, a lot of biological changes across a lifespan, right? And so you got to you got to pay attention to everybody's biology, and and if you don't work to maintain it, like women after menopause, things just die, and that needn't be. You can do hormone replacement. I do. I'm doing a lot of podcasting about the pellets and things like that to help mm-hmm. women really enjoy their life more. I mean, they are miserable when they are menopausal, and they are oh. so much better. Men too, particularly right? To testosterone replacement yeah. men too it's a little you know it's a little lower level replacement kind of thing and, and but in extreme t- cases if guy i've i've known men um particularly head trauma patients uh, oh, yeah. uh, i i talked to a, a personal friend of mine who was a, a marine and he served 
uh, overseas and he he had serious trauma and his hormone levels because of that yes. were, were that? I'm not talking low they were non-existent yeah literally he had wow. no testosterone that's where depression and all Yo, that oh yeah you he started doing the TRT it. and it literally saved his life yeah that's not pe- hyperbole if people have to be yeah. if Fuck people yeah. have to you pay should. attention you should because a lot of a lot of what goes down as depression in the 50s and 60s in women is actually just menopausal syndrome oh, right? or perimenopause in their 30s and 40s point is it, it, it can keep things really going. So, and I've always said that, you know, whatever that thing is that's there at the beginning with your wife, if you can keep that every day, if every day that's still there, that's a successful marriage. Yeah, dude. Yeah, but it's, but you don't have to, you don't have to worry about 10 years down the line if tomorrow is the same as today. Well, did you One know, step at a time. But yeah. when you were, cho- when you were not choosing your wife, but when you guys yeah. chose each other, yeah. were you able to notice some of those things in advance? Because I no. feel like you meet a girl and you're like, who knows what's in here? You yeah, know? yeah, no, it's a leap of faith. Let's be fair. But dude, but, I, don't, but I, but I had a strange, a I had a strange reaction to her where I met her twice, and I'm really shy. I can't go up to people, and I, and I didn't know it was the same person, and I, I had to talk to her both times. Oh wow! And, and gave That's her cool. my number both times, which I'd never done That's like great. ever. Wow! Yeah, and, and she and was like, "You're," and I didn't number. learn it was her. The, the second until we'd been dating a year and I saw a picture of the night where I met her the first time I was like oh you were there that night oh my god that was you that's cool yeah weird. she's like I'm dating this guy with autism <laughs> <laughs> but dude, Theo like honestly taking that leap of faith like yes and no I think a lot of guys myself included I did this for a long time you feel like you're doing something wrong by factoring in a woman's sex drive into whether or not you want to settle down with her oh no like, all that's got to fit together you got like don't it's not a leap of faith as much as you try different women and if a woman's not as sexually active as you are or is sexually interested like she's not a good fit you're not being a dick by doing that it's but a also serious sex issue isn't everything though it's not everything it's not but, everything, I, but I always it's like to say a it's a like, factor that should be you shouldn't dismiss it as a non-factor for sure. i like to say it's like hair and nails it's not cancer but if your hair and nails are failing, like there's something up. There's yeah. something up in, internally. Keratin, you know what I'm saying? Keratin, I think. <laughs> What's this? Is this this just a text question here? Uh, yeah, we had some other ones, but I I wanted to try to help uh, some people. There were a couple written. Like ones some I people. Used. Is this from Nick? Uh, <laughs> hey can we guys, say semen instead of cum, please. Yes. Hey Thank guys, you. I was curious what causes some guys to semen ejaculate a like a firehouse, a- and some. To uh, ejaculate, like a leaky faucet. Okay, I've got some little junk, but I can throw ropes across the room. <laughs> right. This this felt very love line. Yeah, so. yeah, it is very love liney. So people are all. I heard even Joe Rogan making this mistake the other day. He he was people confuse where it, the ejaculate fluid comes from. It has nothing to do with your testes. Wow, nothing. That's wow. news except, to me. Except Dr. except the testosterone production that the testes create sperm and testosterone. Sperm cells. The fluid is created by your prostate gland. Wow. And it is stored in the seminal vesicles, which are these, sort of looks like a wing almost under the prostate of these, mm. these chambers that mm. store the fluid. And some people can produce a lot of fluid and store a lot of fluid and like Mike can reproduce it very quickly mm. and they Super can put hard. out and big volumes. Yeah. And that's just a genetic thing that just some people are that way. Wow. Uh, and so- There's the, nothing it, you can do to enhance your- No. That's well, just, you, can, you could refrain from- Ejaculate. Does right? that help? I heard it uh, helps. Use it, helps it or to lose it. To oh, a it point, helps. it helps. It helps to a point. Yeah, it helps to a point. But you can also go the other way. But people like me that don't have a prostate, which produces the fluid, Mike, ghost loads. No ghost fluid. Ghost loads. There's nothing. nothing. He jizzes you, and it's just you, like magic. You're like no, one nothing. of those hairless cats. Yeah, I yep. am one of those hairless yeah. cats. Do you, so do you, but does it feel the same? Same. <gasps> same. Weird. No. Sounds like a Tom Clancy novel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. Or I don't like Harry that idea. Potter. Yeah. I need I need that. I need that yeah, end zone celebration, too. you know? Like I need to fucking Yeah, I, yeah, I want to I want an end zone dance. Yeah. Just like a windy day and that's it. Uh there's even no wind. It's just normal. Wow. Is there a noise? Is it just it... I make the noise, but that's it. No <laughs> oh no my God. No other... But does anybody believe you if no semen comes out? <laughs> does anybody believe? You? <laughs> yeah, cuz you can fake it all the time. You you, 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 first of all, I don't think males are motivated to fake. You know what I mean? Oh, I've, so, I've been there. Really? Okay, Anything well. to get me out of the damn bedroom, dude. I would do it. <laughs> There's a lot packed into that statement. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah probably. I feel like you guys might need a one-on-one to yeah, save the place so, for it. You I but, so but anyway, so the point the is, time. the prostate and the seminal vesicles are where all the fluid comes from, and into the seminal vesicles, the the um, 
sperm just drips into the fluid to put more sperm concentration in that Oh, wow. Like and that Budweiser testes. plant. Like you ever been there in yeah. Boulder, Colorado? It drips yes, in. Uh, golden? No, uh, golden, Colorado. Of course. Yeah, so the, the, the testes are just producing cells of swimmers that make their way up the vas deferens and drip into the mix with the now fluid. what about korean people and people other people do they have the same thing everybody has it the same do some yes. people have a thick a more you know dilute bath Thicker yes sweat, as you yes there's yeah. differing is as this questioner was asking there's a whole range of volume fluid you know wow. thickness and there's tapioca pudding there's all kinds of stuff Dang, oh, wow. huh? <laughs> well this is like an episode to catch a predator look here's the thing man these days it's all about the look man it's all about the clout, man. And I know if anybody, let me see that watch, bro. What's up, bro? Damn, bro. And I know where you got that at. Blue uh, Nile, uh-huh. baby. BlueNile.com. You can celebrate all of life's special moments mm. from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a once in a lifetime piece at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Dude, nothing says I love you like that hot diamond. <sighs> Put that warm bitch right on her finger. You know what I'm saying? Or if you love a man, get him that diamond. Oh, get him that diamond stud. Aaron, whatever you need, man. Vintage, classic, modern. The possibilities are endless. Why add more stress to your jewelry shopping? One stop shop. Talking about that blue Nile. For engagement to anniversaries and birthdays, you need to have a trusted, no pressure jeweler to help you celebrate. The, The unique thing, Brendan, is that they. You call them and they, they 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 have a trusted person on the line. They'll go over with you how to build it. It's like your little helper, your it little is. diamond helper. It's man. like sending somebody into the mine with the pickaxe and letting them know what you want. <sighs> if you want to get Tiger, get him a little uh, diamond crusted backpack, Ooh. or you want to get Boston a little uh, pacifier with that okay. big uh, ruby on okay. the end. So celebrate your love and life special moments with jewelry from BlueNile.com and King of the Sting listeners. You get fifty dollars off your first purchase of over seven. Fifty dollars. This is exclusive. It includes loose diamonds. Use code K A T S. That's code K A T S. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Oh, good. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Where are these guys? Yeah, uh, seriously, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not okay this with this already. Bebop and Cox Steady over here. <laughs> straight from 4chan. Get to look related. Pick right or left. These guys are not related okay. at all. Uh, <laughs> I want. I want Guido on the left first. Yeah, I gotta talk to that sure guy. Left. How old do you guys think this guy is? I'm 24 in my eye rock, <laughs> and uh, he might be 37. The guy's 19. He's obviously a Cats fan. So I'm What's fucking going on, that? boys. I got a question for Mike and Dr. Drew. I'm 20 years old, and I would rather hook up with a 45-year-old woman with a Motley Crue tattoo on her lower back Champion. than a girl my age. Is that normal? Gang, gang. Buzz, buzz. Mom issues, am I right, Drew? Well, but weird to me is that there's a lot of that these days. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's a function of older women or, they, you know, women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s are out of the sexual revolution. They sort of maybe are more sexually kind of out there because we went through all that. You know what I mean? Well, it seems like now there's kind of a different movement where everybody's me too. Well, you know. yeah, th- that's a thing. Dude, if I'm a 20-year-old now, okay, I look at a 45-year-old woman who's like, yeah, I want to fuck. I find it. Let's do this. Yeah. When I'm surrounded by 20, uh, 20-year-old 20 girls who everything seems very rigid and I'm kind of it's scared. Scary. I there's would be my, very my, scared of... 20-year-olds are scared. Yeah. They don't want to do something wrong. I, 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 they don't I feel do like they're wrong. more down to... No males. The males are scared. The, the males. Ma- the males are. Like, I don't want to do anything wrong. I don't want to be seen as a rapist. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, me too. For me, they're sense. very scared. They don't know quite what the parameters are. So even with that fear, Doctor Drew, is it able for? Or are they able to still? They, but you, you can't eliminate your sexual desires. Is that possible? Like I know there's like maybe this different mind frame. Like okay, I'm scared. I don't know if it's okay to be sexual. That sort of thing. So, so but are you able to physically and like whatever it is biologically? decrease the same off. desire that we felt as kids so so in other words you're trying to take their perspective like hmm, when i was 20 i did not find 45 year olds attractive but 45 year olds were different when we were 20 you know what True. i mean it's a different population yeah. so they look i think they're more attractive now they look more well 45 year olds when you were better too. when you were 20 45 year olds were dead I know. You know, because it right. was fucking the cowboy era. Yeah, that's right. Or that's they were been smoking for 30 years or whatever. Yeah. Grapes of wrath. Sexy. Yeah, yeah it's sexy. Um, and so so your question really is, why are they so attracted to the older older women? And maybe that's porn. There's a lot of sort of... Wait, but kind of also, wait a there. second. A I, think, I think you're getting, going to more of a base level. Theo was onto something there. Like, I think that a lot of... And this is speculation. I think a lot of young men 
associate because of this push of matriarchal statehood yeah. this idea that you're everything you're that idiot. is masculinity yeah. Yeah. is toxic masculinity somehow they get imposed with this idea that i'm really horny and i love pussy therefore i'm doing something wrong yes and and of course what really is doing something wrong is how you act on it and how you behave on it and being a lech is is wrong and yeah. and, and 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 forcing yourself on a woman is wrong but embracing the fact that you're a horny young man isn't and yeah. and it's a probably for the twenty-year-old brain, a really difficult—it's a scary riddle to, un to unfold. Yeah, yeah well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I think not even to do with the forty-five-year-olds, but say you're uh, you're twenty years old right now, and when I was twenty, you had so much sexual energy, you know, mm -hmm. and you wanted to do sex, mm -hmm. right? But what if? But now your brain and the society is telling you it's wrong. If you pee the wrong way, you're a fucking rapist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like anything, if you look at your dick while you pee, you're going mm -hmm. to hell. Some mm -hmm. woman's going to kidnap you in a fucking Dodge Caravan. All this shit, right? Everybody's in fear. Yeah. But does that fear still stop? Does it stop the, does it actually curtail the biological no, desire? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the way you do that is you scare kids. And sometimes that can do that, right? But it, it, the fear once you've already, you already, your biology is already set. It just sort of puts a cap on it, and makes them confused and scared. See, that's crazy to me because then where does that go? You I know, know. It goes bad. That's, right? uh, there's always yeah. there's always a you tremendous problem it. that comes from the dissonance between what you're told and what you're feeling. Yeah, mm -hmm. but remember, there's a real problem with that. We don't know it's like a the full effect of, of porn yet, too. I mean, they the, a lot of the males oh. are sort of like good with them. They, they like. I, I have found back when we were doing a love line, a lot of guys were like, eh, I'd like a girlfriend, but they're, they're a lot of work. I'm okay. I got porn. You know, there's a, porn Jeez. really kind of takes the edge off a little bit for some of these kids. I don't know. We don't know I the full it. effect of that yet. I don't, the, I'll tell you the full effect. It's not good. Porn? I'll tell, yes. For me, it has not been. I know it's like, because I, I feel like these haunting images in my head, I think, and it just keeps me from like... Uh, you, haunting images as far as the porn you watch? Yeah, like it's when you're fine. you with a girl? No, just overall. The images are fine and the videos, it's fine. It, it is what it is. I, I don't think anybody's wrong for doing it, but I just think that mm -hmm. then it affects the way that I could behave or think in a sexual way. Well, because yeah. you're being influenced the by theory. the porn you watch, right? That's the theory. And you're expecting the girl to be like the girls you're watching. Or, or Yeah, or just you or just you don't think of people, like you don't think, like there's somebody, they, they do porn somewhere in this building, you know? Sure. And I don't know where it is, but uh, we, we Let know. me know, because I've been Let's like, go find. <laughs> yeah. Let's go look. Let's go take a look. I mean, yeah. well, don't trust Vlog me. it. Let's I've, go. I've tried to look. Yeah. <laughs> Nick knows, and he's almost, <laughs> yeah. he's been suspended once. Let's <laughs> yeah. just say that. Yeah. He uh, just came back from suspension. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but now I saw, the other day I saw a girl walking into one of the offices, right? And she had like a bag, and she's got different costumes kind of thing. And I'm like, okay, this is... But, but also, I noticed with this girl, just by my glance, and this is all judgment, okay, here's a young lady, she's tired, she looks like she's had a tough week or something, like, just all the stuff you don't take into account when it comes to porn. Like, porn, you just see this finished product. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 I think if I would distill it down, what you're saying is you're fearful that you will treat people like objects, not human beings. But we do that with everything. I think if it's fair to do it with just porn, we do that with our athletes too, right? You look at them, come on, you're millionaires, well, just play I've basketball. Well, I've noticed, I'll tell you what they really can't have is, opinions off, off riddle me this, gentlemen, Carol and I have been talking a lot about this lately, Yeah, which is that what what has really <laughs> happened is we treat we treat people like cartoon characters. Yes. Like everyone in media has become a cartoon that you're entitled to act out on, Correct. cancel. cancel. They yeah. don't really exist. They're just cartoons. And and it's really I think I think TV started it like in the '60s with Gilligan's Island, yeah. and it's become like pervasive now. I think because of social media and reality, because it reality TV, TV too. But it's but, but, all everyone's a cartoon. Yeah, but I think social even media politicians makes it worse are too. cartoons. Yes. everybody's oh, yeah. a cartoon. Yes, everyone's cartoon. And and so it's like these aren't humans, and I think it's the same thing with pornography. I, I think that's what you're getting onto, and it's causing us to behave in really obnoxious ways to humans who just happen to be in the public Agreed. sphere. Yeah. Really, bad. also look at yeah. Also, Agreed. I also like we should take into consideration that even prior to the lockdown which has only made things worse most people work way more hours than ever before and are making less money than ever before in comparison to how much everything costs every when i was growing up i'm, I'm not you know you, you were all in the same age bracket when we were growing up even regular people there was usually a one income household and you you were able to do it you had a couple cars you go on vacation and my friends dads were cops or teachers and like they, you could live a life. 
It's not fucking the way it is anymore. Everyone's overworked, overstressed, underpaid, and then you see people on TV and on the internet who are rich and seemingly not doing anything harder than what you're doing. You're just like fuck. Well, because this. you're comparing yourself to them. Because right. now, if I'm a, you know a, a regular dude, I or a regular, let's say I'm a 18 year old girl, I get on Instagram, I see Kylie Jenner and her yeah. G wagon and her Gucci purses. Now. It, you know, or when I was a kid and I got a cool car at 16, but then I see Travis Scott with his G wagon. Now instead of comparing my car to the kid who was up the street, I'm you're comparing to the world now. Right. So it, and that's people making, have this resentment. That, and we all rose lead to narcissism. We're yes. all we're all kind of narcissistic mm -hmm. these days. Everybody. Yep. And some more than others. But if you really have a, a good dose of it, like you have some childhood trauma and stuff, mm. you're going to express envy, and envy is an extremely destructive emotion. So you're going to feel. She pisses me off. She's got what well, I got to bring her down to me. And I got to bring her down and to that's my where side. Social media is a that's, tool to help that. That's the canceling. That's Correct. the mob. That's Correct. everything. Yeah. And that's what we're into these days. And it's really destructive. It's it's again. I I cannot warn people enough. That is a horrible instinct to be jealous and envious and knock people down. That is the worst the human beings have to offer. Crab mentality. And it, it, but how do we? St how, how how is there a way to curtail like <clears throat> like should only cert like should you have to finish high school or do like what should you have to do to get a social media? like you know it almost seems like you get a driver's license right which allows you to act and behave with a vehicle and but a, a social media account these days is a vehicle it's like you have people some anybody can not even be a real person you have to have your real name on there say something on twitter and they'll cite it on Troll cnn accounts. or on and, and, uh, and could be life altering to the person they're correct. talking about like like destroying it's their crazy. life correct. i put the I think a lot of people look at it as like, what can we do to get the public to start doing this? I honestly think like maybe the responsibility falls within people in front in the public eye. Maybe there needs to be a little bit more transparency in the fact that like, I think you're taught regardless of what level of athlete athletics, politics, or, or, um, entertainment, when you get into the public eye, you kind of create this idea. It's this unspoken rule that you pretend like it doesn't affect you. Just keep on trucking, keep on trucking. I think the more and more we expose the fact that athletes, politicians, and, and entertainers are actually human beings that have moms and dads and daughters and sisters and brothers. And we're like, no, you know, that really makes me feel horrible. And um, I've been suicidal and I feel fill in the blank because I'm a human being just like you. I happen to be in movies or I happen to play football for a living, but I'm a fucking human being with feelings. And uh, maybe I'm not saying you should, but maybe we should all, you know why? Because bullying face to face has a way of working it out. All kids are assholes, fucking assholes. Little kids are assholes yeah. all the way up through even teenage years. But what happens is most people, unless they're sociopaths, you act like an asshole and every once in a while you see how your behavior affects another person. You see, you look at it like, oh man, I really fucking hurt that guy's feelings when I made fun of him in front of everybody yeah. or in front of the football team. And or I, somebody I, whoops you for being an asshole. And I, and yeah. I, and then, or yes, yeah, someone humbles you. Reality has a way of filtering out not only genetic things, but actually social things too. There's yes. a filter where you go and you grow and that's what creates evolution. The and, internet and, divorces and, and, you from that. And maturity that. And, and selfhood and adulthood. Yeah. And the internet divorces you from that. So I think maybe yeah. if if we in the public eye, even real, you know, all the way up to A-list, people like me on the Z-list, all the way up to the A-list, start to say like, um, you're right, you're entitled to your opinion, you're entitled to your Twitter account, but uh, you don't know me and you just shit on me and I, I that really hurt my feelings. You know, yeah. it does suck. I don't and think I, that would stop it. Mike. I don't either. Maybe, not yeah. maybe, maybe not. And, and, and my, you guys my, are smart though. I, my fear is also that television is so cartoonizing of people that they won't stop they won't stop mm -hmm. Just continue the cartoon images a and then people feeling justified in acting out yeah. this is the every time i i've had conversation with 27 year olds where i go look you cancel people and they can't make a living he goes at least they're i had a guy go at least they're alive i go oh, whoa God. man if you've been working on something for 50 40 years it's your career it's your identity and they now there's no possibility of moving forward yeah so what so what this is what's going on right now. It's yeah. like, oh my God, you're and, destroying. Do they have an understanding? That dude saying it, that's something inside him why he's unhappy. It's he, real. He common. gets pleasure off them losing their game. But real do they common. have it's that thing inside of us? I just wonder if the mainframe of uh, feeling and of understanding that is in a lot of people from our generation, if it's in these, if it if it's not now in the hand and not in the. I, I think the so, compassion's there. I think what do you mean? compassion's there. Just like, 
you know, like you would say, like we, we would see something, we would feel bad, this would happen, you yeah. would... In the world. Yes. And now it's just like, I just wonder, I start to wonder if the same set of values or understanding or empathy exists in younger people that it did... This is getting in the way of developing that. I'm right. I'm holding yes. up a phone. But, but that's my point, though. If you took that away and did it in a more real life fashion, here here's an example. Right, you know that, I agree. That, that gentleman, I believe his name's Daryl. I wish I could remember his full name, but uh, Does he, he work at a um. It's not that Daryl. What does he look like? Red hair? Uh, no, no, he's a black gentleman. Uh, he doesn't work at that. Uh, <laughs> he works at the Jiffy Lube on Ventura Boulevard. No, no, I'm talking about okay. This guy, he, I believe he's on Rogan, and he oh, he goes around Daryl Hammond talking to Klansmen. Oh yeah, and he's, yeah. Yeah. and he's a black guy, and he he just spends time roads. with them. He does. He I was like, I'm not trying to change you. I just want to spend time with you. And through spending time with them, they change. They he collects their fucking hoods, and he yeah. come and these guys all come on. And they're like, I don't know what I was thinking. You know why? Because that's reality. There's yeah. empathy well, in seeing someone and talking to someone and experience someone. You literally don't do that. It's a weird facsimile of doing it when you look at your phone or you look at your computer screen. But it is not the same. That's and until right people can realize that, like. Through human interaction, it's the only way moral and ethical things can thick. be put in place. Right. That Laffy there Taffy was, Ursula let, right let, there, your boy. Thick. Let me just say, though, there was a famous book uh, in the 50s. A guy went out and tried to study how to deal with uh, discrimination and bias and stuff. And the book was called Contact. That contact with uh, with another person that's different than you is what takes away yep. all that bullshit. Yeah, and it's also, but the, and the, one thing we don't see in the media, they, there's not the they never the true the full story isn't there. It's like you of course, never it's a cartoon story, never. always the cartoon clickbait. It's yeah. just the same, and it's also like you ne like, and I think we have to start looking at things not at like I feel like it would be better if we looked at things as a as a people problem than as a like I constantly feel like racism is always blamed on white people, you know, and I see a ton of racism that goes from all different ethnicities. And we talk about it on here sometimes that there's racism across all walks and towards each other. Yeah, that's our brain has a glitch and that and racism is one of the glitches yes. we have to pay attention to so we don't fall victim to it. <laughs> now, Drew, are you do, do you do any drugs or anything like that <laughs> right now? Not today, but overall, are you are uh, you not in many, 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 many years? Really? Not, like now marijuana or anything that's a legal drug it's no I, I keep thinking I, I it scares me oh look um <laughs> she's a friend uh, <laughs> she's amazing she's right? your comedian? friend comedian yeah this is vicky gumbles yeah no 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 it's um what's her name oh he just looks like her oh no she's not a comedian okay she's she's chin's ex and he screwed her over not oh. my ex uh -oh. <laughs> well, well we, chin and we set chin up uh, with chinder a while back on a date mm -hmm. with this beautiful young lady right chinder over. <laughs> so, but she's, uh, you know, just like the rest of us during quarantine and just in life, you life. know, love can be kind of a, uh, you know, something we tricky. all tricky. Yeah. Capricious. So, uh, Nick, you want to bring Great her in word. here? Chen, you want to bring her in actually, Chen? Very sure. pretty girl. Yeah. This is uh, my, my first ever Chinder date. Carly nice. Ray. Congratulations. <laughs> What's up, Carly? You know, not much. <laughs> Okay, well, look, Carly, uh, you guys want to take us, uh, everybody yep. needs a little bit of uh, luck and love and, and can also use some suggestions and guidance sometime. That's a little direction. A little direction. So that's why we have here uh, Dr. Drew and Mike. Um, I just want to know what's going on with your love life and if you have any questions you could use some answers for, mm -hmm. some suggestion. Um, um, love life is pretty much the same. Dating, nothing like crazy serious, and I don't know. That's kind of like about about it. When how was, how old are you? You don't mind me asking. I'm just turned twenty. Just turned twenty six two weeks ago. All right, you're right in the thick of it. This is my personal opinion. I'm a guy. I can't put myself in your shoes, but this is from what I've seen, and I'm only talking through my experience. Wait till you're about thirty two <laughs> to start realistically thinking about finding a, a lifelong partner. Smart. Because not to their own fault, men in their 20s, mid-20s. Animals. Until uh, the advanced guy can be like 26, 27, like Drew's sons. They're, they're, they're pretty square away. Guy like me, I was like 32, 33 before I even had the ability to invest real um, sympathy and interest into a female partner. What if she dated older guy. guys? We should get guys in their early 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're at that age where I think it's not gross. The point, is, the point is men are animals until they're about 27. 
They should. We should be like. We should have been caged. We're super. Shouldn't super you guys insecure. have been? Should have been just caged and put in a cage. And we uh, are. He literally was put in a cage. All of yeah, he was caged. We're, yeah, all, all of we're all going to be in a. Half of our friends are in cages. We're going to be in a zoo soon. Okay. <laughs> You're just really insecure, right? You don't have a lot going on for yourself most of the time. Most man, guys, man, at 20, most guys at 25, 26, they're just they're trying to put their life together. They're working. They're typically really invested in their career, building themselves, and then they don't even get that kind of free um, that, that 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 processing power to think about like, oh my god, this is a human being, and I gotta really listen to her when she has problems, first. and I gotta invest my time into what's going on in her life. And it's they're and they're also pumping testosterone through their body, so they're fucking horny monkeys. It's a really bad combo. <laughs> the, the Brendan, talk. yeah, and, and and but the other thing is that men, for whatever reason, males seem to need a sense of their identity in the world before they can understand who they are and then be available for another person. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm. But she, but she can have fun. You're saying before she gets serious. No, yeah. do your thing. Do like your you thing. Can have fun. Right. Yeah. You're you're a living, breathing human being that has needs and, and desires. Go have fun. Do your thing. I'm saying. Don't get serious. Don't or or find yourself a guy who's thirty three and really d treats you like you're a princess. So that was our twelve minute diatribe <laughs> of her telling us how old she is. <laughs> she didn't ask us any questions. She's she was, not, said, she was like, "I was just gonna king or sting it." Uh, Real Housewives of Orange County. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Now, uh, when it comes to these relationships or this dating, do you try to make yourself a little more available? And do you find that a lot of guys are uh, like, based on what Mike and Drew were saying, are you finding that to be kind of true, or or what do you think? I think it can go both ways. I mean, there's, so I'm 26. I usually tend to date older because growing up, you're always told like men have what are like two years younger in maturity level. Yeah. It's more like 11. <laughs> so maybe more. Yeah. Maybe 10. But I think, yeah, I mean, my track record is a lot of jerks. Mm -hmm. So, and then I think like the few ones that were nice it was just like timing didn't work out well uh oh so do you have a broken picker I don't know. well you gotta kiss some Pardon frogs you, you meet you, the prince. well that's true but maybe she, maybe her picker's off she's sort of attracted to the a-holes yeah you got this drew mm. yeah i think my picker is definitely off yeah. okay. do, you, do you like the bad boys yeah kind of but i also think that i was listening to something and it was about like you know, I think it may be the same with men too, but just that the challenge or like the chase or the, yeah, like the bad boys, or the douchey kinds, like, I don't know why, but somehow their women find them more interesting or maybe not it's, all women. It's usually, but. yeah, it's primal. It's, it's younger women and most women outgrow that by around 22, 23. So you need to outgrow this. It yeah, is not, 26. you are not going to change them. It is mm -hmm. not going to go well. Yeah, I can definitely say I'm, I'm pretty over that. I will Good. say like uh, there was a period of time, like I think also it just gains, a lot of it comes with like maturity in yes, dating, yes, right? Yes. So looking back, like obviously at college, that's not dating um and then even after college just still not really being mature in dating and then now it's been a couple years and i'm 26 and um i think just even looking at the last two years like you kind of just have to like grow within yourself and yeah, like, yeah. i know for me like and so how did the chinder date was... figure into this <laughs> well well chin chin and her shared a bunch of sake and so then you. chin so you. and then so you. and then at the end of the day chin was like actually i'm married <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's married. how that went it was so funny because they try to do this segment called chinder and i was single at the time and then right when we found carl that right around that time is when i started dating my my best friend and girl. chin didn't tell us this or Carla. i couldn't i don't want to ruin it for everyone so i was like ah it's already too late we already did this committed committed to the to the product yes, i yes, get yes. that yeah, yeah. Now, she was awesome are. Now, Carly, I have a question. Now, these men that you're spending time with, are these, when it comes to sexualness, <laughs> are you guys, ha are they, are these men, you know, real confident? Are they erect or what's going on there? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, are just, are they, yeah. are they having like erectile problems? Are you noticing anything like that with some of these younger yeah, fellas? Are they too aggressive maybe a little bit? That's your uh, buddy. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> yeah. How's Chin's bulgogi? That's what we're asking. How's the... <laughs> no, I just want to know if you're How's seeing any sexual difficulties with these damn young. The youngins. With these youngsters, no. yeah. No, can't can't say no. Well, okay, wow. I'm not I like... saying anything. I'm saying that I feel like, especially with guys like 
in my age range. And like, I have friends, I have guy friends that are my best friends. So I know whatever they're doing. Well, and those guys are stalking <laughs> you just so you know, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Your best friends that that are your men friends, they're waiting for their moment. I, I've I promise always said you. that, Drew. Thank I, you. Not that you can't. Not that you can't be friends with men. I'm not saying that. I'm saying. Well, if, okay. I think it's. I think he overstated by saying they're stalking you. Here's what the truth. No, the reality. With Drew on Here's this. the reality. You're very. You're a very attractive girl. Correct. You seeming. You're very, seemingly very nice. You have a good energy about you. They may not be actively stalking you, but at any given point, even though they're your friends, they want at any given point if you're like. We should just fuck. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. And I'm going to do these, this these right guys, now. These guys used to call us on Loveline all the time. Her friends? Yeah, well, <laughs> the, 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 the equivalent of this. We heard this all the time. And they would go like, you know, did, did you, let, let me ask you this. Did you at one time, your best friends, did you at one time have a date with in, at the beginning of the relationship or a couple of dates? No. So you never dated these guys? Ever. No, okay. No, no, no. Well, that's good. Like a lot of my best guy friends, like, or ones that are single, I should say. Yeah. Um, they are just strictly friends. Has there been the encounter that you're talking about where yeah. a friend, yeah, did want to date me? Yes, but we're not friends anymore. So. Right. Yeah. But, but, but I'm with Drew that, and Mike on this. At any given point, those boys want in the game. Well, if there's maybe, opportunity. But, but the gonna... ones you got to watch over are the ones that, that you dated and then he settles for friend. That guy's mm. stalking. Oh, for that sure. That guy's stalking. Classic oh. stuff. And are y'all doing drugs that too? <laughs> What's that? That that doesn't really work because yeah, he's a doctor though, you know. And then, and then you want to be friends, you're gonna hook up again. Like that's a dead giveaway. Mm, but then are you friends though? You know what I'm saying? I don't fuck. Yeah. You know, I don't I've never fucked Drew. That I'm, that I'm being friends <laughs> well, with. If I'm friends time. with somebody, Mike. I'm not fucking. Yeah, them, my man. best friend let me fuck other people. You feel me? <laughs> Mike, there was that one time. Yeah, sh we weren't supposed to talk about that on the air. <laughs> But I wrecked his asshole. But you I'm guys, glad to know honestly, that you are still enjoying some good times during the disease, you know? Yeah, that is good. Yeah. It's important to know that people yeah. are out there in case the world ends that people are still doing sex and people are still doing stuff. Yeah, I agree. You know what I really appreciate? Chin yeah. keeping it real like a Korean man. Pour my drink. You pour my drink. Oh, not my those, drink. Dude, Mike knows the culture. That's right. Yeah. I, I I was blown away. I used to, I had two Korean girlfriends and I that always Blew my fucking mind. The, they the pour, women have to pour the drink? Pour, pour my, the, the soju, I would be barely finished. Boom, mm -hmm. pour a drink, open the door for me, and it's like, oh, and it's not, not a- Not it's, anymore, brother. Have you gone on a, if you go on a date with a Korean in 2020, it's the woke culture. Is you it? Oh, oh, yeah, so wait, is that minute. true? Has it been ruined? Has it been I haven't, haven't dated a Korean girl for a long time. So I made that up. I made that so up. So one of the symptoms in my life that I know right. I'm miserable in COVID, and really it's a, a symptom of how, how far I've sunk, is I become obsessed with the 90 Day Fiance reality show. <laughs> obsessed. Fist bump. Obsessed. Oh my God, I can't get and, enough of and, it. And that's a sick symptom. Oh yeah. But as a result of many, many hours of viewing of that, Hazarai, is that what you do? Oh, you, yes. Yeah. Your Great show. <laughs> um, I, uh, I've learned about other cultures and this male-female stuff that's crazy. How about, how about the African but, guy? Where oh you, my God. And his culture, they're yes. like, hold on, you need to bow down to the man You're, you have to be take care what, of What they call submissive. Yeah, you and be, she's oh, like, must be she's like just, and she goes, I'm American. <laughs> it ain't happening. I'm telling you right now, it ain't gonna go she, down they, like they, they, they casted that perfectly. It's the best. Yeah. Hey, I wanna, I wanna point out Are real quick. Are you talking quick. about Soulja Boy? No. Soulja Boy? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a new season? No, you like, we'll sit down and watch it with you sometime. It's we'll, so we'll, good. Let's do a viewing party. Yeah, we'll she, have our own pillow talk. She, she, yeah. With, for, with King and the Snake. Yeah. Come on. Dude, we come over there and do it. Let's That's sit. a great I, idea. Come Drew. on, man. I'll watch a couple episodes. You'd love it. Yeah, in like two Cause, or Because she's like traditional South and she's like very like women power. And then he's straight from like Kenya or Nigeria. Uh, I forget where. Nigeria. Nigerian. Nigerian. Yeah. yeah. And there it's like the woman who stays at home, takes care of the man, oh, has yeah, the food. Yeah. You know, like all the elders in the family, the females are like, well, of course, you'll submit to him. And she's like, well, I'll do what? <laughs> she's like, this is over. She's like, I'm American. She's a damn Dixie chick. She sounds like one of the darkest Dixie chicks. <laughs> they're, just Dixie <laughs> yeah. they're, not, they're just Dixie now. They're just Dixie now. You can't be Dixie chicks. Thank you so much for jumping in today. And, you'll be uh, great. Yeah. You'll be great. You got You're this. fine. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're We're doing not worried fine. About you. but, but I'm with Drew. Your best friends are crazy well you just be careful that's all just know see, look at their motivation that's all i'm and i do think men and women can be great friends that's not my thing at all but sometimes harbor people harbor a little desire behind that yeah, that's you're all. Right. i've yeah. i've loved being married 
because of that. Uh, that has you been a great more female friend. That has been yeah. a great gift. I have legitimate female friends yeah. because my motives aren't nah, really rancid. Yes. Oh yeah. Do no, they no, look yes. like warlocks? No, 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 no. Like 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 Katie Ellis. Jason's uh, J Katie Ellis is fucking fine. And if I was single, mm -hmm. it would be weird if I was her friend. Now, especially because Jason's wife, like, like it's well, she's your like buddy's my wife, like Doctor Drew's wife, but even not, like, like my wife's look. my wife's friends who are oftentimes actresses and, and shit, and they're like fucking crazy hot. Like I love the that's ability to different. have. I'm saying you meet a girl at a coffee shop. And I'm not got, making friends with her. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Too dangerous. Too dangerous. If, if it's your buddy's girlfriend or or wife, then you can be friends with them. Right. Yep. But if it's just an outsider and she's single, yeah. there's no way. But even girls like coworkers that are attractive. I, now I feel really comfortable, like being, like asking, just talking, having conversations, in, engaging in that way because yeah. I'm not, my motives aren't the same, you know. Like I like that too. Is I, I think some of that's also just as I get a little bit older, I'm just able to recognize, like you don't have to try to be sexual towards any woman who yeah, just kind of shows agree. you attention, yeah. or you don't all, you know. Sometimes it's just going to be a bad idea. Well, it's like it's like Cat, you know. Cat's probably my best, one of my best female friends. She's right. a single. 24 year old you know i i, I don't even look at i don't even it's almost like she's this little sister who right, i right. take care of but right. i will say this with younger girls now though um and i and i mean obviously legally aged humans <laughs> i'm glad you said that <laughs> you bet yeah. uh you bet <laughs> But um, I definitely get more scared now of even talking to a girl probably that. that's well, imagine you're 27 you know what i mean you're 25 how, how scared you'd be Oh, I can't even yeah. imagine. So, we yeah. are. Well, hey, good times. I just don't want to do any fiance. crime. What's your favorite episode? Uh, 90 Day Fiance? Yeah. Uh, oh, I like the one when uh, Humble, he's like Russian or something, and they fly all the way from the Moldova. States to Moldova, <laughs> and they get there, and the fight. fiance and the dude, then the brother are about to fight. Not he's a like, we'll, they, we'll, they're in there. He's like, we'll faces. go out. He goes, we'll go outside. I'll show you because he has like a, a sketchy pass. They're like, why were you in Dublin? Ireland, what were yeah. You, yeah, why were you in Ireland? You and he's like, please just stop with the questions. They keep picking at him. And, and then finally, he's like, shut up. Shit, first time he's meeting him. And I like, see the evil up. hand of producers behind a lot of it, too. They're just pouring the alcohol. Down. Yeah, That's there's the a lot of alcohol. And then yeah. they both stand up. They're about to straight up fight. It's fantastic. I love that. Do you think there should be any repercussions to some of these production companies that are just pouring gas into people's lives? No, it's lives? reality TV. I understand that. I understand it's that. I, I, it's not, though. It, it, Theo's on to something. You're looking at it from a seasoned, not only a professional athlete, but a guy who has grinded in the entertainment industry, and you've you've developed a kind of a maturity in it. Yes. Imagine if you're if from Theo's hometown, you're 19, 20, you come to L.A., and some fucking exploitive disgusting producer comes and they're like it's gonna be great go on the bachelorette you're gonna be awesome i've you're, had that happen and then they I pour alcohol happen. down your face and then and you're having this existential thing on set and they go come, we're gonna talk to you you're totally right for hating yeah. that guy right. because and they so i've had it. that so happen. watch the, the, when, I, when i first got here that's my that childhood happen. watch yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> watch the scripted series unreal because that is the that is an accurate portrayal of how it goes down and if you still want to do it then it's on they're adults it's on them yeah you know people kind of know what them, it is but now what's well, yeah. interesting because when i was young we had um or and when i was young enough you know to be 19 we had um you they hadn't had reality television out there yeah they only had a few years of it sure so it wasn't it was just road rules yeah road rules and real world like yeah. it was it so you would you could go into reality tv as a contestant or as a cast member and be yourself still. Yes. You weren't savvy to the game. Right yes. now, I no, think nor were been, the producers. Yes, they weren't upping the they weren't upping the game the same way. Agreed, it was different. I remember but a lot it, of it is casting. A lot of it yeah. is how they cast. But I, at, they, at they night, know exactly would, what they're doing. Hell yeah! At night, we would spend time playing. Somebody who had, had an instrument. There were people there that were doctors that were uh, that are now politicians that were just spending their you know spending a two week or yeah. a month period yeah. taking out from their lives. Yeah. And at night, we'd sit around a campfire. It was a little different. And then it escalated to where. It was just but, there would be no milk, but there would be tequila. But, but even on the Ultimate Fighter, it's like you know you have this list every every night. You give the list, and the next morning the food would come. If we asked for you know burger meat or chicken breast, it would come you know maybe by midday. If we asked for alcohol, it would be there that night. Right. So Craig's religion is no no dummy. So no, that is that has been the, the I alcohol piece is the him, part I that I always have been concerned about. And and, and they I'm fact, sorry, Drew. What'd you say? I was the the alcohol like, part is the part I've been concerned about. And to some extent, I'm being a bit 
um, facetious and saying that the producers were forcing the alcohol. It, it was probably some local Moldovian cr- film crew. Let's face it's it, provided and, there, and they, it's provided, and, w- and they weren't really drinking that much. I think they backed off that. I think I think people understand that they that that's not cool. But here's yeah. what I don't like. I, maybe in some of the MTV but, but, ones. But here's what I don't like about it. There's an inconsistency, and you and I both know this firsthand. Yeah. Because in one way they take reality, innocent reality TV stars. You yeah. know, I know they're adults, Whatever but they're is. still they're still just normal humans yeah. and they put them in the in the pit of fire and yep. they push it a yeah. heightened situation That's they right. also at the situation. same time television producers overly protect politicians and established entertainers you know when we have to do an interview with fill in the blank politician or or a big celebrity you there's like this is exactly what you can and can't yeah. ask this is exactly what you can't topic you can't even go into this and uh, make sure that there is this and this on set Correct. or else we're not showing up Correct. and so there's an inconsistency where they're taking the average Joe and the average Jane and they're fucking with them as much as possible, but yet overly protecting the people that we probably most need to get to the bottom. Well, of. like I have a buddy who did a thing on a large network we all know, and it was a competition comedy thing. And he went out there and crushed it mm-hmm. crushed it and he gets back and they go, you know, man, with your childhood, it, would your uh, dead, you know, father and uh, friend, what, what would, are they here? And he's like, what? Like and they keep prying. He's like, "Oh, this isn't about comedy at all. Yeah. You guys are trying to paint it's, this narrative. It's a reality and, show." And yeah. he he's not savvy to it at all. And he's like, no, "No, no, I just crushed on stage. I'm good, man. I'm not thinking about my dad or my dead friend. I'm thinking about beating in this competition." He didn't get selected because if he's not going to play the game, they're yeah. not going to be. Even though he's the best comic by far, there they didn't pick him because he wouldn't play the game. I they saw picked that. the comic who ate shit. But had some childhood trauma and talked about it and that. But the interesting thing, also, and I'll, I'll just finish it up. The kind of the point I was making. I'm slow to get to points because I don't know sometimes what I'm exactly going to talk about. But I'm saying this is that um, now people grow up watching enough reality TV that when they get to a show that they're on, they already have a character that An they're agenda, going to a be. Template. An agenda, it's almost yeah. like it's just re- it's it's Cartoons. so it's so bizarre. Cartoons. Everybody. Well, look look, yeah. look look at the Real Housewives. Cartoons, you need the, you need the Real Cartoons. Housewives, man. You watch the Real Housewives and it's insane. I Cartoons. told you, dog. Fucking VG, dog. VG, VG dog. Gumbleson, dog. Till I <laughs> but that, that get back to one of the earlier points we were talking about is how people make an assumption about a certain part of the country. If you watch Beverly Hills Housewives, you think that's how people are in Beverly Hills. If you watch The Hills, you think that's how people are in LA. You watch Jersey Shore, you think that's how Jer- – and it's like, dude, I, w- I lived in Jersey for two years. Some of the most fucking educated, thoughtful sure. people. And it's like – but they love to create this idea that it's all guidos. They love to create the idea that everyone well, in the South is this fucking toothless racist. And it's like, well, you, dude, you, what are we doing? You yeah. got to remember that – what that humans the, the whole nature of drama i mean what did sophocles write about right R- sick people acting sick all drama is that humans are drawn to the narratives of other humans engaged in extreme and usually pathological behaviors yeah we don't you know a, a, a healthy family sitting down at dinner are we gonna watch that mm-hmm. Hell no, no, that's boring. Like chaos. But the uh, family striking each other in the head and throwing spaghetti and stuff, we're, we're in. We're, we're going to watch on that. A, on a, on that's a, just in the human psyche. On a much higher scale, too. Yeah, so because sometimes it's like, are we are we actually creating bad stuff or are we just creating exactly what we really want? No, it's, it, the, the, the market decides. And, and, and there is where we have... Uh, the, the consumer is to blame too because it 100%. goes it goes in a more important level too how many stories are you going to see on cnn or in the new york times about a cop who fucking risks his life to go into a, a burning building to save a family or a cop who who dives in front of an open fire it you won't know make an, any news it doesn't it doesn't and that fucking shit happens a lot i've watched with my own eyes i've watched cops spend all day well, that, trying to counsel fucking crazy homeless people in Venice. I watch it. Well, that, that I watch happens it happen. way more often than the other stuff within the stuff we the right, negativity but, but, we see on but TV. But news has become a reality show narrative also. It has. It's fear, all fear WWE. Point. It's all turned into wrestling. Yeah. And their narratives are their narratives and they stick with those narratives. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's get back to a little more sex before y'all leave because we yeah. need help. Yeah, we all need help. <laughs> uh, uh, and Nick's been going through some issues. You want to ask anything personally, Nick? I actually think they're all Pretty good. Well, you got a girl now. Around, you got a girl Nick's now. Nick's been around me for a long time. Oh, my <laughs> Did you know that? Oh, because of, uh, of Corolla, yeah, too, yeah. right? I forget that Nick was getting help before he even got Yeah, here. we used to have private sessions. <laughs> you know what? You know what we were lo- supposed to. Uh, <laughs> how, dare, how dare you? <laughs> you know why I love uh, Adam Corolla? He's one of the only guys right now who, you know, he's not on any network TV or nothing. His opinions. He just you know, says it. He when, says it. He's always been that way. Yeah. And, and people, what's the comedy for me is, and for him too, they're always like, 
dude, you've changed, Adam. You've changed. I'm like, no, I've been with him the whole time. Yeah. This is this is him. He's always been like this. <laughs> Stay in the same stuff. He's just you, you're just hearing it now. Forever. We have so much disingenuous bullshit in front of our eyes on camera. You know, all these celebrities now who are activists and Adam is the same dude he was when he was a fucking out of work boxing trainer. Yeah. You know, tr- begging to get on the air. He's exact, a fucking same guy. Same opinion. That's cool. Exact yeah, same I love opinion. it. You know, it's interesting too, as you go through life, there'll be times where you're a fan of somebody and the times where you're not a fan and the times where you're a fan again. Isn't yeah. that pretty fascinating? <laughs> he, here's what's a bummer about Adam. You know, he's just being his authentic self is that we admire that and that's rare and you have to seek that out. Well, That's and then he the gets bummer. shit for it. Lots of it. He gets a, he's, but, he's but, be careful. Again, you can't cancel him because he's doing his own show. Right. That's, it's kind of like Trey, Clay Travis with when it comes to sports media. His, outkick. It, yeah, outkick. His, yeah. his opinion is not the popular opinion. You're not going to see it on ESPN or Fox, anything like that. But it, it's really what most of America is thinking. But if he was on ESPN or something like that, he's going to get canceled. Like, have you seen what Max Kellerman? Yeah. He, he's saying the SEC is full of stupid people for playing football. They, all right, dude. The majority of people don't think that way. He, he's gonna. Max Kellerman's a now. pussy, bro. He couldn't fucking catch a ball, could he? No. <laughs> what, fuck, what the fuck is he talking about? He can rap. <laughs> he's a white rapper, and he's never grown up with the SEC, dude. People in in the South, a lot of them would rather they would way rather see a football game if they had the last. If they're like you, you're gonna die. They'd be like, that's fine. Yeah, two days left. They'd be yeah. like, can yeah, I at least see Alabama, Auburn? Before it's just I go? what makes them the most. Ha- it's like. Saying to somebody in Silicon Valley, like, oh, there's a code over there under that bush or something, you know? <laughs> and and you know what? And people don't experience it. They look at it from afar and they fucking judge. Yeah. You go to Norman, Oklahoma and watch a game. Go to fucking, go to any, go to Georgia, go to Alabama, go and, sit and be in that stadium, experience that and tell me you don't say like, this is it. This is it. This but is it's, living. It's also life. This for is them. living. But this it's is also life for them. You got to imagine if you shut down college football or those conferences, it has a ripple effect. The the broadcasts and the advertisers and the people in the stadium and the the kids who had a chance to go to the NFL. You shut all that down. It this ripple effect. And, people don't even think of it. And COVID, well-being. let's shut it down. It's like, well, hold on. Let's look at the actual numbers and the facts. Why would we shut it down? And let's not make a, a emotional decision. And well being. Like, let's not overlook that. If you're living in Oklahoma and you work your fucking ass off Monday through Friday, the fact that you can spend Saturday, every all your friends, everyone getting together, putting on the red and going like, let's go, roll tide. There's fucking a lot of value in that. That's You remember that shit, you know? And people, you can't just o- overlook them. That's important. Dude, it's so important. And to some people, it's the best thing that you do. You right. know, it's the f- and it's a great thing. Man, it's interesting. In my, in my family over the years, the most uneducated, what most people would do, deem the most uneducated, are the happiest people in my family by far, man. I mean, way ignorance, happier ignorance than ignorance is bliss, man. Yeah, and it's it's just crazy, and not the most affluent at all. Are, are they using their hands every day in their work? I feel like yeah, people, I like feel like people that are engaged in the world, like yeah. with their hands, problem solving and building, mm. are happier now than everyone who's in their, in their heads. Yeah, you're right. There's that Mad yeah. Men episode. Yeah, you know, they not are. To, not to st- and it makes me too much. jealous when I see them. It's like I'll go into their home and I'll be like, man, this home it's not clean. They, they got love it. Lizards on me and shit. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. they got illegal animals in there. <laughs> but um, and, and they're and they but they're loving it. And their kids are the best kids uh, right and it's just it bl- and it's not even i'm saying that because it's my family i'm just saying it surprised me yep. it surprised me as i get older and i get caught up in things and i'm like man there's there's a lot there's something i'm missing about my own and joy is it because we're in la deal I, I don't know if it is or not but it's, I, I don't know i think it's definitely because i'm inside of my head let's get to a little more sex before we get out of here <laughs> yeah all right good because i've refrained from from moving out of la California is such a goddamn mess so, right fellas, now. Gang, gang, it's going to get worse buzz. if Biden wins. Gang, bro. It's Kevin. I'm coming from a small town in Illinois. I actually just moved here from Cali. The Beatles Finally got it. the hell out of Cali. Um, I moved here right before lockdown. Smart. So yeah. I'm just now getting into the dating scene in this little Midwest new vibe I've got. Um, and I wanted to get some relationship Where advice Where did he move you. to? Illinois. Little, little town, town Illinois. So my question is, there's a lot of these country girls who have mm-hmm. kids, like mm-hmm. some with a lot of kids. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and uh, your boy crushed it over the last couple of weeks. I was doing pretty well. Right, take it easy. Before uh, <laughs> I just got the Rona last week. So He got it? Yeah. Brendan, Rona Brothers here. Shit ain't shit, man. Bro bros. It made me 100%. stronger, bro. I, I, my card uh, is Anyway, <laughs> so I'm wondering, do I, do I go after these girls who've got like two, three kids and <laughs> hopefully probably are done having kids? Or... So I hold out for that no baggage hitter 
and <laughs> run the risk that someone's trying to pinch uh, pinch a little little semen nugget out of me All right. and uh, <laughs> turn it into a human being. Ooh. So, want to hear what you guys have to say, gang, gang, buzz, buzz. buzz so, buzz, so yeah. first of all, can we we need to promote the fact that most coronavirus cases are like you and this guy. I mean, it's really the majority that's 99% of cases. Ninety-nine percent of people yeah, are fine. Not literally ninety-nine percent. But the media wants you to think that's. I, I know. That's and everyone's like, "Yeah, hey, Lacroix." I had H one N one back in two thousand nine. Goddamn, oh, damn. Near, nearly killed me. That I was say some N1 real shit. Racist that was slur horrible. Almost. That was yeah. some real shit. Yeah, and so we, we need to promote the fact that this guy, you, th that's the face of Drew, coronavirus. You can't. You can't you He's went, doing it if you just let him do it. <laughs> but he, but, but he hasn't had Corona. I, no. you, I I have, and he also gets shit on all the time for saying. He had H1N1, it. dude. AIDS. That, that's all. That's in the past, bro. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I, I get shit on all the time for trying to make this point. Jesus, and you guys are the living embodiment of this point. And you can see how healthy everybody. Everyone's fine. You got through the flu. All right, all right. My entire family. Be careful with mom and dad. You know, grandma. Because right, of you, Brendan. Yeah, <laughs> and, and guess what, Theo? Everyone was fine. I knew that. Yeah. I mean, it, listen. Your probability of dying of coronavirus if you're under thirty five is point oh 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 one. I mean, what about I, I college temp, kids? I have a ten percent probability of dying of prostate cancer. I consider my prostate cancer cured, right? Yeah, <laughs> cured. Ninety percent probability of not dying. I, I'm in that ninety percent. Then guarantee why you. is the whole world closed? Then it's, it's because I think I think I really from the beginning I've been saying this and I'm saying it again. The press created this panic porn, this panic, and we and we and to be fair to everybody, we didn't quite know what we were getting into, but now it's pretty clear what this thing is. Let's let's behave accordingly. Let's learn to live with it and wear a mask and do our thing. And even the news though is backing off though. You don't see a lot of it, man. Like on the news, you really don't see a lot of it these days. They, so they've I'm, transitioned a, to other stuff. I do a nightly show on Channel Eleven here. It's a, the Fox affiliate, the, like Family Guy, Simpsons kind of Fox. Yeah. And we do a recap every night of what's going on with coronavirus, and uh, we're, we're calming everyone down. That's what we've been trying to do the whole time. Doing the time. Lord's work, man. But anyway, back to this guy and his and these women. <laughs> um, he he needs to be careful because uh, people with ch women, women with children have have um, first of all you can date them, right? We all agree with that. He should be willing to go out with these ladies. Yeah, no problem with ladies. That. Yeah, but, but also don't waste their time. Don't waste their time because they may be needing to get going because they've got a whole thing going on Correct. that they have to create resources for. And so they may not be looking for a guy just to date, but he can still... Uh, see, one of the things that bothers me about dating is everyone puts so much into it. Just enjoy another person's company for dinner. I mean, that's, yeah, It's okay to do that yeah, and hang out. And it's good for you. It's good for you to learn about other people and learn about your town and enjoy... Being attracted to that person, but maybe not going further with her or not being attracted and learning about yourself and whatever it is, go hang out with these people. That's fine. But I don't think he should really engage in any relationships with people with with kids unless he wants to raise those kids. Agree. Mm. That's it, period. Yep. Yeah, that's a great point. I think there's a yeah, so I'll put dating on such a pedestal in my head, like, oh I yeah. gotta date, I gotta date them, but no, you know. It should be just hanging out. Just hang I I used to love dating for that reason. When I was in like a resident stuff, I was like, this is fun. Meeting hanging out with people, yeah. yeah, yeah it's great. No, just wherever it goes, don't worry about it. And yeah, hey, you want to go get, grab a coffee sometime? Make it easy. I think sometimes, especially for guys, I notice for myself, I make it so big in my head yes. that it's a no, hot air balloon. Too. Women do it too. Oh, they do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but good. but again, my, the hard part is if you're really, really attracted to somebody, it's hard not to do that. Right? Yeah. But you got to sure. you got to watch yourself. I also think that the, the, the value of like that release where if you're so consumed about like the end goal, you know, I must meet a woman, I must meet a guy. No. It kind of deteriorates from your ability to just develop yourself. And yes. when you when you really oh, yeah. lose sight of like of uh, I need to get to the finish line and just work on becoming a better Theo or becoming a better Brendan, you know, it's an, amazing how things kind of magnetically present, in, in yeah. an interpersonal context mm -hmm. how you learn you know learn about forming and breaking and f congregating and sharing and blah, 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 and move along yeah yeah and also somebody you meet that could just be a friend don't push that envelope to get that ass yeah. and get that titty man yeah, yeah. because listen if you, to theo yeah if you get somebody that just could be a friend they might introduce you to the love of your life you know mm -hmm. so keep that mercenary mindset theo is what he's saying yeah 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 <laughs> so, i think that's yeah what another I'm one nick <laughs> Uh, that's actually about it. We're about ninety minutes. Oh, wow. oh that's we're good, 90? man! Wow, Shit, I feel like we're just getting started. Mm -hmm. We help nobody. <laughs> well, how's that? I don't know, man. Know. I feel better. I always feel better. I didn't know that you guys were so smart. I mean, I knew Drew was. I didn't know Mike. Was. Oh, <laughs> Mike's smart. They're both Mike, smart. I don't know that. Yeah. Mike's got some interesting insights. Yeah, great yeah, insight. man. He has lived experience, man. Yes, he <laughs> almost seems like you, like he, like you pulled him in out of the, uh, out of the. Uh, practice area <laughs> you know. i always said like drew and i worked because 
I'm not like Kroll. I don't have that acerbic wit or that insight that Corolla has. But no. what I do have is like empathy. I'm a big drug addict. I'm a serious, desperate drug addict. Yeah. I've had horrible relationships with women. I've had terrible uh, and great relationships with women. And I have a great marriage. I like I always said, Drew is a great football player or excuse me, a great football coach who never played. Mm -hmm. But I've got 25 years in the league. You yeah. know, it's like and we kind of worked that let's way. Like that wrap, little Willie Nelson. Head towards yeah. wrap up with the one story about the woman that you spent the weekend with in Vegas. Can, oh. can we help this guy and then yeah, go to it. your story? Yeah, okay. This, one this was guy very, broke his dick. Yeah, this oh. one was very love liney as well. Oh my God. Hey, Theo, Brendan, Mike, and Drew. I work for FedEx and have had some something very strange happen to me. I pick up a lot of extremely heavy packages during the day. During the lockdown, numbers increased as well as weight of the packages. Sometimes when I'm picking up packages, upwards of 100 pounds, you have to put your body weight into throwing them onto shelves of the truck. Well, I had two very heavy packages catch the edge of the shelf and the package and the force of my body turning into the package smash my penis very hard yeah. i have now developed peroni's disease from the oh, trauma hi, peroni's. no i am with the love of my life but this is emasculated and i'm worried she will become frustrated and leave and oh, is there shit. and is there a way for this to be fixed yes. i'd love to hear dr drew's response gang gang broke dick yes <laughs> yes the urologist there's a lot to be done for peroni's now a ton oh, really? all kinds of stuff curable curable no problem but if he it can affect if he doesn't get it fixed it can affect his ability to have an erection it causes pain in your partner during intercourse. Oh. It's a mess, and it can get worse. It's it's a it's a scar that forms on one side of the penis that pulls it in that direction, oh, so you get a big curve. Get the curve. Yeah. So it's acquired Peroni's. It is quite treatable. Go oh, after. Wow. Hi, Peroni. <laughs> what if my penis is kind of shaped like a candy corn? What is that? I like that. <laughs> Which direction? Oh, uh, skinny part at the top. Uh, that's better. That's probably good, for right? wedging. Yeah. Yes. It's like a like. Yeah. It's like an auger. I'm yeah. Right. Probably right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, auger. What bit. was the story you wanted to end on? He wanted me to, and I always feel terrible telling him. But I went to Vegas. It well, it's, it's it gives you example of what happens if you're way in your disease of addiction, mm -hmm. and, and it affects relationships. I went to Vegas uh, for New Year's Eve, um, two thousand two thousand into two thousand one, not the millennium. Sure. And um, I started party. It was like December twenty ninth, and we drove out to Vegas, and I started drinking on the way, hitting acid, eating sheets of acid, and fucking wow. getting. I remember getting to Vegas and then gambling a little bit, and I was like stumbling, and that's all I remember. Next thing I know, I wake up New Year's Day, and my friend. How many days like, later is that? Like two or three, and so I three and days I, later. Jesus. I remember like waking up New Year's Day, my friend waking me up, and he's like, "We're going. Everyone's down at breakfast. Let's go eat." And I was like, "All right, fuck." So I rolled down there, and there's like a long table of people that I recognize, and it's like a people on both sides. And I walk around, and I'm like, "Hey, dude. Hey, what's up, man?" Right. And then I start introducing myself to the people I don't know, and I was like, "Hey, nice. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you." And this girl goes, "Okay, nice guy." Then I meet, go to the end of the table and I was like, hi, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. And this girl looks at me like I just killed her puppy mm. and she walks away like with her head in her hand. And I was like, what the fuck? And people informed me that not only had I been having sex with this girl for the last couple of days, but mm. I'd been parading around Las Vegas, like going on dates, holding hands and like being romantic with her. And I just introduced wow. myself to her. I have Jesus no, Christ, man. I felt horrible. I still to this day, I talk about it. I'm like, oh my God. Damn, but, it's like that movie Arachnophobia. Have you seen uh, Have you seen Arachnophobia? I have. John Goodman. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> More like Schindler's List, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, addiction has consequences. Yeah, yeah, it's all bad, man. Well, we thank you guys for coming in, man. Pleasure, yeah, anytime. Time, man. It was honestly, it was a great time. That anytime. blackout, dude, again, BLM, man. bro. You know? <laughs> blackout lives matter. However, yeah, whatever you do, you got to support it, man. You know. Um, we appreciate you guys. Let's, yeah, let's yeah you too. Thank you guys. My I wife want, said, "Tell Theo you just come on our podcast, our stream, or whatever." So, I want to. So, so maybe we'll do that. Why don't we watch the show? I need to catch up on the show. Fiance and do a uh, pillow talk. Pillow talk. Where should we do it? It's a fantastic idea. <laughs> Where, should we, we stream it or like record it? Let's go no, to we should record it. Together. Do it in a bed. In a bed. It's pillow talk. Yes, yeah, or a couch. You can do it on a couch. Dude, don't get you, sued calling it pillow talk. Yeah. Well, you have way more bedrooms than than I do. I don't think I don't think they own the name pillow talk. They have a show on a &E. No, I'm aware. Oh, I see but, it all the time, but it'd be and, weird. And by the way, we're make we're it's an homage to them. You know mm -hmm. what yeah, I mean? yeah. I, by the way, the pillow talk part is my wife's favorite part of the ninety day fiance. It's I prefer it over the actual right. show. Who's your favorite couple? Uh, oh, I like the couple who's in Florida. The the he's he's super Jewish. He's uh, Israeli. Israeli. Yeah, they have yeah. a new baby. They have the new baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is too, yeah. This is so. Oh, up. oh, and and I I love the real fat guy in the Thai girl. Oh, the my, super the guy uh, Ed. Yeah. Ed. yeah. Ed. Yeah. Oh, little Ed, yeah. Beautiful <laughs> little fella. And he's doing cameos. You know now what though? Too. He he's he he keeps his sense of humor about all of it. God he bless does. him. God bless him. Oh, have you watched the the twins new spinoff? 
the I, Denise. I, I, and, yeah, I've been subjected to that. That's oh, not my thing. Bad. That is my wife's thing. I, I am not into it. Yeah, well, I, I feel bad episode. for those two. Yeah, it's a it's a tragic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're talking about reality. It's shows. tragic. Let's do a fake. separate talk show about reality. I, I shows. talk all day about reality shows, man. I hate Especially them. ninety day fiance. Bro, I hate them. Nick, those are some of the hottest shows, aren't they? Those coverage shows. Yeah, I, uh, they're huge. The ones just recapping reality shows, or actually, we like do old, one. Old I, let's do it, Drew. Okay, ninety so. day fiance would be a great one because you so. guys could do it in a series. I'll come do so, a couple of episodes. Okay. I, I'll just be a guest, but you guys could do it. I'll, I mean, I'll do it. I'll no, do it. we should I'll, all do it. It'd I'll be do it. great. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. It'd Let's be fun it. to sit and talk about that. It's mm-hmm. so fun. It's so entertaining, man. And if you so guys were just sick. watching it's it so and pausing, sick. like it could be really low time investment too. It doesn't have to be like, yeah. Like we could do a few a whole whole series of them, mm-hmm. different shows. It'd yeah. be interesting if we all watched it, even whether we did some of it together or separate, and then just recorded ourselves watching it and commented at certain. Oh, moments. that's good! Like a reality, like a, a video, and then FaceTime. add that into it. Yeah, when we're all together. And here's yeah, yeah. Ed and Brittany Griner right here. For <laughs> oh, look at Ed, dude. Brittany Griner. <laughs> <laughs> Ed is, he's got a no little neck. Ed, he's man. got a little cross there. Yeah, <laughs> he has trouble with the jab, doesn't he? Doesn't, he can't quite pull his shoulder up high enough to. Oh, do he's, a jab. that dude's eating a lot of jabs, bro? Huh? A yeah, lot of what? You guys, you guys do pillow talk on Ninety Day Fiance. We'll do pillow talk about like Brazzers or oh, something. No, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I bet we could get these people on too. Hundred, of course you could, yeah. easily. Now I want to do that love on the spectrum, autism love, man. That's what the show. I started show. with that. I started with that, and and I don't. De- I personally, it's just something up for me. You didn't like it. I tell you what, I don't like. I don't like the sanctimonious British talk. Spo- the the they're Australian, na- Drew. Whatever it is, it just it just here's this the, the, the soft spoken bullshit. Oh, I just I hate yeah. it. I hate it. I, so I can't. I couldn't. I too distracting for me. What I liked was the Indian matchmaker. We got to do that one too. We got to do that one too. My name is Michael, and I happen to be a 25 year old man. (laughs) He's great. Yeah. I'll tell you what you are going to get a grade A husband. (laughs) (laughs) I love that guy. Yeah, I love him too. Well, maybe we'll have a new show starting up. Fuck yeah. That's a good idea. Mike and Drew, thank you guys so much. Always. Anytime. Brennan and Theo, fighter and wait. I got to go in and go hard in the paint. I do not think. I am in flow, black rifle coffee, I'm ready to go. I need a sponsor, I am a monster. About to open up with this at my concerts. Flow is contagious, brows are outrageous. Thicker than girls that are Instagram famous. Damn, hungry like I'm fresh off keto. Seeing red like Andrew Santino. Every song I hit like the great Bambino. Running ate the queso and the queso Ritos. But everything's gonna be fine. Ay, hate on me, I do not mind. Ay, Theo looking like the type of dude that got a pack of matches in his pockets at all times. Yeah, they sliding into my DMs. A couple of you trapped couldn't beat him no. quit playing like nintendo ds you don't want the smoke like joey diaz uh, meaning y'all edible just got my eyebrows threaded and i'm feeling incredible yeah. brennan's son hit me up he said it's too loud in the club can you pick me up king and the sting Honest.